us this morning, dear God. Lord, we are overcomers in the name of Jesus, dear Father. Say that, God, just rip us, dear God, of all fleshly desires, dear God. God, that we may be with you, dear Father. God, that we may grow in you, Jesus. Help us, God. Help us each and every day, Jesus. Walk with us. Talk to us, dear Father, that we may just live in you, Jesus. Dear God, I pray, dear God, that you just anoint the musicians. Dear God, anoint the worship team, dear Father. God, the people in the back, dear Father, the technicians, dear God. Lord, anoint the man with the word, dear Father, the pastor of this church this morning, dear Father and of course the congregation Lord let all things dear God be in order and accordance to your word in Jesus name I pray amen hallelujah with no further ado we bring on our worship leader sister Jamelia this morning hallelujah Hallelujah. It's a good thing to give God praise, glory, and all the honor. And as we gather this morning in his presence, I like to always remind you all that let us try to worship him and worship him in spirit and in truth and give him all the praise that he deserves. You know, focus on God, surrendering all and giving him you know, that dedicated time this morning. Father, we bless you. Yeah. Father, we glorify you. That you are a sweet God. Yeah. You are an awesome God. Father, there is none like unto you, God, this morning. And God, we big you up. We magnify you because you deserve it there, God. Yeah. Father, even as we gather together this morning to worship you, help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Help us, oh God, Jesus, whatever we may have done wrong, Father, forgive us, cleanse us, purify us, oh God. Let our hearts be pure, our hands be clean before you this morning as we gather to worship you, dear God. Help us to worship you in one. Holy Spirit, take charge, take control, touch each and every one of us this morning and help us to remain focused on you in Jesus' name. alone Hallelujah. is worthy this morning. God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
bless your name. Daddy, we make you up, Jesus. You deserve the glory. There's no other, no other, Lord Jesus. Lord, and as we remember that you went to Calvary, oh God, you did it once and for all. The ultimate sacrifice, sacrifice for all our sins. Jesus did it. Hallelujah. The song says he went to Calvary and he gave his very best. Hallelujah, you know, when they think about Jesus said, if it was possible, take this cup from me. Did Jesus want to really die for our sins? He said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. He gave his best. He gave his very best. Some said, oh, what a matchless love displayed. A glorious sacrifice. Hallelujah. God, we bless your name. Hallelujah. You went to Calvary, gave your very best. You died and rose again, all for me. You said it was finished. Said it was finished. Whoa.
is so great we lay down our life for our friends do you think our love is so great that we take on the burden of being beaten stripped stabbed spit on for our friends <laughs> our, our love runs so deep that we to take on their sins more than one not one person sinned their sins all of their sins you know much you no know burden that is to have that weight on you, but the love of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Isola, can you please um, bless us this morning with a prayer? Hallelujah. This morning we say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah to your name. You are an awesome God. Jesus, we are grateful this morning. Hallelujah. No one else could have done it, Lord, but you, Jesus. The beauty about it, Lord Jesus. When you went to Calvary and you laid on your life. The beauty about it, you said it is finished. It is up to us this morning to believe in our hearts and what you lay down, hallelujah. You lay down for all of us this morning. We can cast all our burdens upon you, Jesus. We can cast all our sickness upon you, Jesus. We can cast all our pain upon you, Jesus. We can put every problem in your hands, Jesus. And nobody else knows our problem but you, Jesus, this morning. So we are grateful and we are thankful unto you, Jesus, for the price you Oh God, this morning we are here. We know that because we have read it in your word. And we understand it, oh God. But there are those this morning, oh God, who don't know how much you love them, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, we pray this morning, oh God, that somehow, oh God, where they are, Jesus, this morning, your love, oh God, and understanding will reach them where they are, Jesus, this morning. Hallelujah, because, oh God, you were wounded for all of us there, Lord Jesus, this morning, oh God. Whosoever will may come this morning. Where are they are, Jesus, this morning? When they're behind the prison bar, we want them to hear your word today, dear Lord Jesus. Some of them, oh God, are wrapped up. They're tied up. They're tangled up, oh God. Their mind are confused, Jesus, this morning. They do not know who to turn to. Holy Spirit, let them know you are there this morning. 
Send your word to them, Lord Jesus. If they don't hear your word, oh God, how can they come, Jesus? So position them this morning to hear your word, oh God. We ask you, oh God, to let your ministers them, oh God. Take them out of self this morning, Jesus. Minister to them, oh God, that will speak, oh God. Nothing else but your truth this morning, Lord Jesus. That your people will hear and come to know you. You know the sacrifice that you took for them on Calvary, Jesus, this morning. So, oh God, this morning, those mind, oh God, that are confused this morning, help them, oh God, to be transformed by the renewing of their mind, Jesus, this morning. We say thank you, Jesus, this morning. We bless your holy name. Everyone that is here this morning, Jesus, is not here by chance this morning. They were supposed to be here this morning. So we thank you, Jesus, this morning. Every need, oh God, every concern, Jesus, we put it into your hands, Jesus, this morning. Father, if there is sickness in the body, we pray for your healing virtue to flow to us this morning. You said by your stripes, oh God, we are healed, Jesus, this morning. That means you didn't take your strife in vain. So we ask you, oh God, to touch every wounded body this morning, Jesus, and let the devil know he has no authority over your children's body this morning, Jesus, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh God, we bind that strong man this morning, oh God. He's roaming through and fro, seeking who we may devour, Jesus. But in your name, we bind him this morning and tell him, in the name of Jesus, release God's children this morning. Release them. Release them. They do not belong to you. We do not belong to you, Satan. Get thee hence, Satan. We do not belong to you. Oh God, we take authority, Jesus, this morning. In our homes, we take authority this morning. Oh God, hallelujah. Our children, them, oh God. Tomorrow, oh Jesus, they will be going back to school, Lord Jesus. My God, we first, oh God, put those buildings, those institutions there, Lord Jesus, in your hands. We ask you, oh God, to line, oh God, your holy angels in this building. Cast out what not supposed to be there by your hands, oh God. And oh Lord, position our children to learn, oh God, the instructions of their teachers, oh God, once more. We pray, oh God, that you're going to bless them, oh Lord Jesus. Once more, oh God, we lift them up before you. You are the giver of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, oh Lord Jesus. We pray, oh God, that you give them as they go forth tomorrow. They're going to apply it there, Lord Jesus, to their school lessons there. Lord God, they will understand whatever the teachers may teach them, oh Lord. Bless our teachers, them, oh God. Touch them, oh God, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Give them the strength. Give them the love, oh God. Give them the understanding towards the children, them, oh God, as they venture, oh God, out to school tomorrow. We say, thank you, Jesus. You are the one who's going to keep them, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you. Oh God, our nation, Trinidad and Tobago, need you. Let your mercy, oh God, fall upon your people, Jesus, this morning. Father, Lord, only you alone sees. You alone understands. And you are going to work in your own timing. So we thank you, Jesus, this morning. What you are going to do for Trinidad and Tobago, dear Lord God. And the hearts and the minds of your people that need you, dear Lord Jesus, oh God. The foundation, oh God, begins in the home, dear Lord Jesus. Father, if they do not have the foundation, they ventured out into society and they disrupt the society, dear Lord Jesus. So, oh God, Father, Lord Jesus, some has gone out. We ask you, oh God, to handle them out, dear Lord Jesus. Let them hear your word. Those, oh God, that are still in the home, dear Lord Jesus, that still need the grooming, dear Lord Jesus, that still needs to hear the Bible stories, that still needs to hear your word, that still needs to hear the instruction, oh God. 
we ask you, oh God, to take care of this foundation, oh God. If it starts to shake, oh God, we ask you to steady it, oh God, at this present moment, that our children, oh God, will walk in your will and walk in your ways, dear Lord Jesus. Father, once more, oh God, we hold you at your word, dear Lord Jesus. You said, train up a child in the way that they ought to grow, that when they are old, they will not depart, dear Lord Jesus. So, oh God, we call, oh God, upon you this morning to help the parents to bring back the training in the home, dear Lord Jesus. Let them go to your word, dear Lord Jesus, and see what you require, dear Lord Jesus. Oh God, if we correct them, we save their souls from hell, dear Lord Jesus. So bring back, oh God, the parents, oh God, are still nurturing the young ones at this moment, oh God, to train them, oh God, and save their souls from hell. Oh God, thank you, Jesus, this morning. You went to Calvary and you did it. So we thank you this morning. Bless us all here this morning. Thank you for helping us to be here. Thank you for the musicians. Thank you, oh God, for the worship team. And we thank you this morning for our pastor, dear Lord Jesus, Pastor Oswald Joseph. We put him in your hands, Jesus. This is the man that you have called to minister your word to your people, oh God. Father, we pray that he's going to speak under your anointing, dear Lord Jesus. No works of the enemy, oh God, will overcome him in any way, dear Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. He belongs to you, dear Lord Jesus, as he walks in you, dear Lord Jesus. Let him speak by you, Jesus, this morning, oh God. Touch him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, and as he minister, oh God, let your word, oh God, touch the hearts of many, dear Lord Jesus, today. Bless your holy name. Bless us all this morning as we hand over to you, Jesus, and you take control, you take charge of all of us, your people, this morning. Bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. I just sing this song. I come before you today. And there's just one thing that I want to say. Thank you, Lord, for all you've given to me. For all the blessings that I cannot see. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I come before you. I come before you today. And there's just one thing. And there's just one thing that I want to say. And it's thank you, Lord. Thank you,
Lord Jesus. We thank him. We thank him for all he's done for us. Hallelujah. We now call on Sister Chavin with today's exhortation. Exhortation is taken from Psalms chapter 1, reading two verses. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the ways of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. This verse is speaking to the godly and the ungodly. We as believers, we are godly. Take no counsel from the unrighteous. All of us have family members that may not be saved. All of us have friends that are not saved. And as a young individual, sometimes it's hard to really look for believers like yourself to take examples from. Many of us have fathers and mothers that are unsaved. Sometimes the instructions or the advice they may give, you know to yourself that they may not be correct based on the word of God. So as Christians, as young Christians, as young adults, at the end of the day, we all have a purpose, we all have a choice to make. And it is God we are all trying to glorify. So this verse said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in this law that we meditate day and night. Meditation comes by seeking the word of God. Regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the situation that we may face, no matter how hard things are, meditating on God's word will give us the strength, will give us the wisdom, will give us the knowledge and the understanding that we need in these last days to live the life pleasing unto God. The last verse said, For the Lord knoweth the ways of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. If we don't want to perish, we have to live the righteous life. No matter how difficult it is, we have to strive, we have to seek, and we have to trust God and purpose in our hearts and in our lives to be that example. This is my exhortation and my encouragement to you. Hallelujah. Let's give Sister Chimane a round of applause one more time. I believe this was her first time. Yes, and she did an excellent job. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now we're going to have a special from a young man who I think is very brave. He's very charismatic. He's very willing. Oh my gosh. He's ready to do our next one here. even do one yet. I'm telling you. <laughs> so... Mr. Damien. He's coming to sing for us today. Yes? Nice. Good morning, church. This, this song I'll be singing is Holy Forever. A thousand generations Falling down in worship to sing a song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will 
Let the church say amen. Hallelujah. We we'll continue to pray for you, Damien, that God will guide your steps, order you wherever you may go in this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we've been sitting for a while. 
So go and call our worship leader once more. She's going to bless us in some hymns and some choruses. Amen. Wait, before she comes, any testimony this morning? Is there anyone with a testimony wants to share? Lovely. Song leader. Oh, we have one. is good. Hallelujah. I remember growing up in church when they would be singing hymns like, oh gosh, gosh boy. You know, as a young person, you didn't understand the words that the hymns were saying, how powerful it was. When I sometimes, when I see, I have two uncles, when I see them go up to worship, lead to some leader like, Lord, Father. But as I get older, I could understand, hey, these hymns, they meant something to them. And I understand it now, and it means a lot to me. Hallelujah. This song said, Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died at Calvary. Hallelujah. Praise God. So stand and, and as we sing this song. Praise God. Hallelujah. Years I spent in vanity Hallelujah. and prayer. At Calvary. At Calvary. Hallelujah. Yes, I spent in vanity and pride. Caring that my Lord was crucified.
Some said, oh, victory in Jesus. Do you know that we have victory in Jesus? Yes. When Jesus died, what happened in the temple? Uh -huh. The veil was torn, giving us access where? To the holies of holies. We have victory in Jesus. We don't have to wait once per year, once per year when the high priest would have come, you know, to take our sins before God. We have access 24-7 to the holies of holies. We have victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. Precious love to me, then I repented of my sins and won a victory. Oh, victory! Oh, victory!
about a mansion, about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. Hallelujah. And the song said, some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Hallelujah. Jesus is my deliverer. Jesus is my deliverer. He's your deliverer. He's our deliverer. Hallelujah. Some say, how do you know he delivers? Because I know he delivers me. Jesus is my deliverer.
you, Jesus. The song said, the Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the earth rejoice. Let the people be glad. Oh, Lord, God reigns. Hallelujah. They say, a fire goes before him and burns up all his enemies. Hallelujah. We just want to lift that song a little high. It's a bit low. The Lord.
to celebrate the resurrection because he is not dead. He is not behind the tomb. He is risen. Hallelujah. He is among us, all around us. Hallelujah. He is with us. Amen. We serve a risen Savior. Hallelujah. You may have your seats. We're almost ready for the main course. But before that, we have a nice young lady that's going to bring to us the scripture reading. Anaya Winchester, give her a round of applause. Morning, church. Today I'll be reading Psalms 91, verses 1 to 6. Whoever dwell in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. My God is my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the flower's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you in His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the, nor the arrow that fl flies in the day, sorry. Neither the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the, f nor the, pla nor the plague that destroys at midnight. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. She just reminded us that in Jesus we have nothing to fear. Amen. A thousand shall fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand. But as children of God, it shall never come by us. Amen. Now we're going to bring on the man with the word. So please stand as you welcome Pastor Oswald Joseph to the stage.
a free people today. We are free to worship you and to worship you in the beauty of holiness. As we are about, Lord, to get in, dive in to your word, lead us in. And God, give us wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding so that we as your people can live and live the life you have called us to live to your approval and in your favor. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You may be seated. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, so we, we, we want to get into the Word of God. And this morning, we are going to be dealing with the Lord's Supper. Amen? The Lord's Supper. And so I want to talk about or deal with the topic found in 1 Corinthians 1 Corinthians, reading from chapter 11, Paul, the writer in the book of Corinthians, as he wrote to the church at Corinth, and his writings is also for us today as a church. And so we are going to be dealing with that. So let's take our Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we're going to read from verse 23 to 26. Amen. And this is what Paul had to say. Amen. And he says, For I have received, that is Paul is saying, I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you. So Paul was delivering unto the church that which he had received from the Lord. Amen. That the Lord Jesus Christ, this very night, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, when he took up the bread, the Bible says he gave thanks. And after that, he break it. And he said to the disciples, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Amen. That's what Jesus was saying. And after the same manner also, Jesus took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the new testament of my blood. This do ye, as oft as you drink it, you drink it in remembrance of me. That's Jesus. Amen. Verse 26 says, for as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until or till he comes. Amen. Now, there are three things there that we, we want us to look quickly into. Um, as I was going through this passage, the, 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 the title <coughs> or the the theme of this, the, the message is, until he comes. There are some things in, in the Bible, in Scripture, that we as Christians must do before Jesus comes. Amen? And there are many things that we must do or we ought to do before Jesus comes. But one of those things is the Lord's Supper. That is what was given to us, or one of them, that is given to the church, commanded by Christ himself, that we do this in remembrance. Now I want us to see that this that God has given us, that Jesus has instituted to the new church, the New Testament, or the church of God, 
in the New Testament is that God says we must, amen, take the Lord's Supper. And we must also recognize that when he was talking or giving these instructions, he was giving it to his disciples. Amen. Now the question is, are we the disciples of Jesus Christ? That is the question. Are we God's disciples? And then the answer to the question would be, yes, we are God's disciples. Every person who would have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and baptized and walking in accordance to God's word, you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. Understanding what disciples mean. A disciple is one who follows Jesus Christ. Simply put it, a disciple is one who follows Jesus Christ. So when Christ was given these instructions, it was given to his disciples. Not everybody. It was given only to those that are walking in the footsteps of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What I want us to understand is that the Lord's Supper must be done presently. Amen? It is not something that Jesus Christ instituted and leave it there. Amen? But it, it goes on and on even to today where the Bible is saying to us, as often as you do this, amen, you remember the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it must be done in the presence. But I want us to see that this which is done in the present should enable us to look at the past and then look forward to the future. Amen. So what we are doing today, present, must bring us to the place where we can look at the past. And then we look forward to the future. Amen. In carrying out the Lord's command, with regards to the Lord's Supper, we see the ultimate victory of Christ over our sins. Amen. And the future dimensions of being with Christ. Well, let's see that, right? In carrying out, when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we should see the ultimate victory that Christ has given us over sin. That's the past. And then we must also look at the further dimensions of being with Christ. And I guess that's all, that's most or the thing or one of the things that we as Christians live for is to be with Christ. Amen. So, Jesus was clear that the practice of the Lord's Supper is about the present, meaning that we have to do it now. Amen. And as we are doing it now, we must understand why we doing it. So we have to look at the past where Jesus, our Savior and our Lord, that we just celebrated the Easter where Jesus was died. He buried. They were, he was buried and he rose again. Amen. So when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we must see Jesus on the cross. Amen. I know you're going to say, how could I see that? We have to understand we were not there when Christ was crucified. But there's recorded in the Holy Bible, amen, that Jesus did die. And the Word of God says to us, blessed is the man who have not seen but yet believe. So based on history, based on what is written we know that Jesus Christ was hung on the cross. Amen. And we also know the purpose and the reason why we hang him on the cross. Amen. It was because of our sins. It's because that Christ was paying the wages for our sins. So he was on the cross. The Bible says he was wounded 
for our transgression. Now, that is way back in Isaiah. Old Testament, Isaiah is saying that this Jesus, the Bible says, was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon this Christ. And by his stripes we are healed. Amen. And we see it coming down where the time come when Jesus was nailed to the cross. Amen. He took the curse. He took all the, the punishment that we should. All sickness and Jesus took them all. Hallelujah. And on his way up to Calvary and reaching to the top of Mount Calvary, they nailed him to the cross and they lifted him up. Hallelujah. Jesus on the cross cried out when all was done, time to die <coughs> for the sins of the world. Jesus said, it is finished. What was finished? What was really finished is that man's redemption was paid. Hallelujah. We don't have to pay any price for our sin. Christ have already paid it for us. Amen. So we now, all we have to do to receive that is that we must accept Christ into our life. For as many, the Bible says, as received Jesus, to them he gave the right and the power to become sons and daughters of God. It tells us something. Based on the scripture, if we don't receive Jesus Christ, we cannot consider ourselves as children of God. Or what are we? We are God's creation. Amen? But if you need to become a child or become part of the, <coughs> the family of God, the Bible is saying we must receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So when we partake of the Lord's Supper, my brothers and sisters, we must see Christ all over on the cross, hanging there for the sins of the world. My sins and your sins. Thank God. For the Bible says that these prophecies must be fulfilled. So God so loved what? The world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That has been fulfilled. God's son came and paid the price. What is left for us to do as believers is to accept Jesus Christ. Any man accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. So that's the, that's the past. Jesus has already died. He ain't going to die again. Amen. He died once and for all. Hallelujah. For, for humanity. He's not going to die anymore. Amen. Hallelujah. But you know the good thing about it? His death, his dying on the cross is once and for all. Amen. So no more will there be a crucifixion again. Jesus did it for us all, and he will not do it again. So what, when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we see the past. We see Christ dying for our sins. But when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we must look forward to the future. Yes. For the Bible says, Jesus says in the book of Matthew, amen, in the book of Matthew, Chapter 26 and verse 29. I say unto you, Jesus talking to the brethren, talking to the, 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 the saints of God, he says, but I say unto you, I will not drink. I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine until when? That day when I, Jesus, Drink it new with who? That's the future we're looking forward to. Amen. A day we are looking forward to when all believers, all blood wash, all who are water baptized in Christ, we are looking forward for that time, for that day when the Bible says, God will drink it new with us in his Father's kingdom. <laughs> Hallelujah. Many people don't believe this kind of thing. Amen. But this is biblical and this is true. There is a kingdom that God has already prepared for us. 
You know, some people don't believe that. God has already prepared. Let me tell you something. The kingdom of God is already established. Already established. All that is waiting for, uh, that kingdom now is waiting for, is you and I. <laughs> A kingdom, the kingdom of God. This is not the kingdom of this world. Amen. The kingdom of this world is run by man. Amen. But the kingdom of God is run by God. Already established and is waiting for all the believers. Oh, glory to God. And that's the time. That's where we live. This is why we partake of the Lord's Supper. Because it is promised to us by, by God that God himself, Jesus himself, is going to drink and partake of this in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So we are living for that. Amen. So when we take it now, we are practicing or getting ourselves in readiness for the day when we go sit down in a big, big, I don't know how big the hall going to be. But Jesus is going to be at the table. Amen. Hallelujah. And we all sit around the table. And we will drink it new with our Father in heaven. Amen. Bless the Lord. In other words, the Lord's Supper, when done in the present, looks at the past where we got the ultimate victory at his death, burial, and resurrection. And we look forward in hope for the world to come. A lot of people believe when you're dead, you're done. Stop believing that. Amen. Stop believing. When you're dead, you're not done. All that happens when you're dead is that this body goes back from whence it came. The earth. Amen. But there's an inner man, there's a spirit man that lives on. And that is very important. Amen. That we keep that in mind. There is a world to come. If you don't want to believe that, amen. Let me help you in believing. There is a world to come. And the world to come is not like this one. <laughs> amen. One day I sit down and I went up the, 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 the Fort King George. Sun setting and all kind of thing. And I look at the, the, the and I say, Lord, you truly a great creator. When I look at the sunset and I look at the greenery, I say, My God is a good God. And I said, Listen, if this world is sinful and I can see the beauty. Imagine where there is no sin. <laughs> Imagine where there is no killing, no stealing. Imagine where there is no pride. Imagine a place where there is no sin. If this sinful world looks so beautiful, imagine the world to come where the Bible says there is no sin. Hallelujah. I have no hatred for none, nobody. Peace, joy, and happiness serving the Lord. Amen. There is a world to come, my brother. Amen, yes. But in this world that we live in, Christians, we live in hardship. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say amen for myself. Because apparently... Christians don't go through hardship. Eh? Some, we, some Christians living, uh, what kind of life boy? I want to tell you, even though as a pastor, I'm living a hard life. Yeah. Amen. In this world, Christians live in hardship. We struggle. We struggle against poverty. We struggle against illness. We struggle against conflict. And at the end of all the struggling and struggling, we have to die. <laughs> there is something in this world that no matter what we go through and whatever, we have to end up dying. 
Amen. But I want the church to know, hallelujah, that poverty will come to an end. Oh boy. Sickness one day will come to an end. <laughs> Conflict will all be over one day. Hallelujah. Death will be no more. One day, all the hardship that we are going through, there is one day if we remain faithful to God and live according to the principles of God's word, one day, our troubles will be over. No more sickness and pain and all these things. Yes, my friend, one day. But the Bible tells us in John chapter 16 and verse 33, these things I've spoken unto you. Jesus again telling the church, telling the people, these things have I spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. Them fellas sleeping on me in the back. The word of the Lord, Matthew, in John chapter 16 and verse 3. Jesus speaking, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In this world you shall have what? I guess we will read that one day. In this world we must have tribulation. <laughs> Amen. I want us to just stop there for a while. In this world, we shall have tribulation. We will be tested and tried on every hand because we have an adversary called the devil who is going to make sure and do everything within his power so that we don't spend our eternity with God. Amen. But I want us to hear, the Bible says, these are the things that will happen in the world. But my God, the Bible says, but... Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. You know when you see a conjunction, it means it changed the former. Oh, somebody help me now in the latter. Amen. So in this world, we are going to have tribulation. But brothers and sisters, be of good cheer. Hallelujah. No worry. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is saying, I, the Lord, have overcome the world. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, if God is our overcomer, then he says, we are overcomers. Only cowards yield when the four they meet. Amen. But we are what? Blood, blood princess of the royal host. And must falter not. Know what? Desert our post. Amen. The Bible went on to say, we are conquerors, more than conquerors, through Christ. Hallelujah. A living a Christian life in this world is not easy. But thank God, we have someone called the Holy Ghost that lives inside of us, that walks with us, that surrounds us, that is above and beneath us. Hallelujah. That will help us fight our battles. And when we are led and aided by the Holy Ghost, we shall be victorious. Just as Christ overcome the world, we too will overcome. In Christ Jesus. Amen. So we shall overcome. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are living and we are partaking of this. Because one day, one day, not in this world, but in the life to come, we shall partake. So this world is a troubled world. This world is a wicked world. Amen. But I want to tell the church there's a world coming. Hallelujah. Jesus promised that now. Amen. God's promised that. And when you turn to the book of Revelation, Revelation 21, amen, you hear what was revealed to John, the apostle, Jesus Christ. And as, as, as they tried to kill the man of God, John, they throw him or cast him into a, of oil 
and God deliver him from it. Amen. And to get rid of him, they decide to banish him, send him away into a, a, a country, a isle, you know, so that they, they don't want to, 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 to face him at all because of the power of God. And so they sent him away, and when they sent him away in the isles of Patmos, the Bible says that God visited him, and God showed him things that are going to come. And Revelation chapter 21 says, this is John speaking, I, John, saw. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. God is showing us the place that is already prepared for us. Amen. Amen. I, John, I see a new heaven. <laughs> I see a new earth. Amen. For what? The first heaven and the first earth gone away. They had to run away from the presence of God and God is establishing a new heaven and new earth. Amen. Hallelujah. For the first earth and the, uh, was passed away. First heaven and first earth was passed away and there was no more sea. We don't need no sea. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. John says, I saw a holy city. Everybody running to Jerusalem. Everybody uh, running to Jerusalem. Some people say I have to go to Mecca before you could become all this. Amen. But John says, I saw, not this old one we have here, but I saw a new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride. Oh, glory to God. You know, a bride does look for, she, for the husband. Amen. I know because I got married. And many of us here get married, so we know. Amen. When, when the... Um, in our days, uh, they'll change everything. In our days, you sit up there and you sit with your face, you're turning so, and then you hear some music start to play. Brown, 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 brown. And when you, when you hear that now, your heart start to, stand on your past there. Yeah, your heart start to beat up, beat up. Julian, brother Julian, amen. Yes. And then when we look, when we look around, because you know what, when you turn and they tell you, they don't turn up now and they don't turn around. Oh my God, and you see the woman down there, you say, ha. Ah. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. So as a, the Bible says, at dawn, as a bride for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, this is what John hear. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Amen. Amen. So let's go on some more. <laughs> and God and God and God shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. Oh, what a place is being created for us. I'm somebody says, uh, somebody says, I'm satisfied with a little mansion. But here what God has for us. A place where there be no tears, no more tears, no more death, no sorrow, no crying. There'll be no more. For all them things have passed away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, when you take the Lord's Supper, you must see yourself in the future. Amen. Being in this place that God has created for us. God has created a place where there will be no sunlight. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. For the Bible says, God is the glory of God. It's going to be like a light. It will be bright, brighter than what we have now. This is a place. The Bible says, the very streets paved. Some people have said it's Nancy's story, you know. Amen. But the Bible, according to the Bible, God showed John where we're going to be. And he says, the streets, they are paved with gold. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me, let me just tell the church, we are going to heaven to sit down. So don't believe you're going up in heaven and sit down all, all the time, just sit down. Boy, that's a, that's a boring thing. Just sit down doing nothing. No, 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 no. Read the Bible. No more pain, no more sickness, no more sorrow. 
But we shall be what? Worshippers. Hallelujah. We are going to be true worshippers. We are going to be messengers of God. Amen. It's a place where we will be with our families. There's a place where nobody coming to rob us. Amen. Our mansion will be open. Amen. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Amen. So God has prepared a place. So when we come before the Lord and we are partaking of the Lord's Supper, it is not mine, it is the Lord's. And God says, one day, in a day to come, we shall all sit and have this supper with him. Are you looking forward for that? Are you looking forward for that? Amen. I live for that. I live for that. And he that sat on the throne said, Behold, I, God, I have made all things new. And he said unto John, Write, for these words are true and faithful. God is not a man that he should lie. And the words of God is truth. My friends and brothers and sisters, Celebrate Jesus. Amen. Live for him. For in him we have life eternal. Amen. As we get ready to come to the Lord's Supper, partaking of the Lord's Supper, be reminded, Christ on the cross, and we are going forward into the future to be with him, to have this supper with him. Stand with me as we sing the song. I want us to sing, and for those who are going to partake, you can come around the altar and let us eat the body, drink of the cup of the vine that represents the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And fellowship. In Jesus. So let us all stand. Hallelujah. I am grateful for your body. Amen. As we sing unto the Lord. You went to Calvary. And you gave. Your very best. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise have it right.
examples that Christ has laid down. The Bible says on the, the night before he was crucified, he was partaking of the Passover with his disciples, and then he instituted this thing. The Bible says when he finished the Passover, that he took the bread. Amen. And the Bible says he prayed. And so we are following the examples of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that which I have in my hand, it represents your body on Calvary. The Bible says it was broken for many. And so, Lord, in carrying out and being obedient to your word, we present this element to you for your blessings upon it, Lord. It is now sanctified for the purpose for which we are going to use it. And that is to eat in remembrance of your suffering, the body being broken on Calvary. Now bless this, Lord, this bread. And help us, God, as we eat it, we recognize the power and the holiness of it in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. And the Bible says, in the same manner, he took the cup, the fruit of the vine, amen, and he blessed it. And so, Father, we present this, the fruit of the vine, it's grape juice, it's a grape wine that is used, and we are using it as you have instructed us to do. This wine represents the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ when his body was broken. The blood that poured out on Calvary. The blood that came from his head with those crown of thorns. The blood that came, O oh God, from the hands that were driven into that cross. The blood that came out of his feet as the nails were driven in. It also represents the blood when they pierced him at the side that flowed out. Had it not been for the blood, there would have been no forgiveness of sin. But thank God for the blood that was poured out of Calvary. As a result, Father, we have forgiveness of our sins. And thank God for the blood because the blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Bless this ointment. Bless this this thing that we are giving to you, this fruit of the vine, and that as we drink it, we drink it with remembering what you have done, and God drinking it with the assurance and the hope that we will spend eternity with you in glory. Bless, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You went to Calvary Give your very best. You died and rose again just for me. You said it was
Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. you have in your hands is representing the body of Jesus Christ and the fruit of the vine, the blood. When Jesus finished praying for the bread and he broke it, he gave it to his disciples and he said to it, eat ye all of this, do this in remembrance of me. So let's follow the examples and eat ye all of it. Likewise, when he had already blessed, when he had already blessed the fruit of the cup, he said to his disciples, as he's saying to us today, drink ye all of it in remembrance of the blood poured out on Calvary. So in the very said vein, drink ye all of it. because we are forced or that we are pressured into doing this it is our choice to do so we willingly choose to do this and we are thankful for the choice that we have made for there's a reward for the choice that we made we look forward for it but we are living in a world God where tribulations and tests and trials they are all over 
and we are living in it Lord we are commanded that we are to live in this world but we ought not to be of the world and what is happening in our country Lord is going to happen to us but we pray in the name of Jesus that when anything comes against us that is not of God oh, the holy angels of God the spirit of the living God is going to be with us. You will protect us, Lord. Not only uh, us individually, but even our family, God, will be under your protection. We need a shelter in the time of storm. And you are our shelter. You are our covering. You cover us like a hen covers his chickens. Hallelujah. So we are thankful for who you are. There is none like you. From time to time to immoral, immemorial God, it has been proven. There is no other God like you. You are the God of Moses. You are the God of Abraham and Isaac. You are the God of, of, of the Lord Jesus. You are the Lord God Almighty. You are the God of the apostles afflicted in the name of Jesus. And even those that are here that does not know you and have not yet accepted you as Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus, your ministering spirit will continue to minister so that those, those individuals will hear your call, will respond to your call and serve you for the rest of their life. Bless us all who come and partake of your supper. We see you, Lord, on the cross. Yes, Lord, we understand what you went through, the pains and the suffering. We understand when you were in that Golcutta, in that place in Gethsemane, when the pressure was handed down, you cry out, Father, hallelujah, if it's possible that you remove this from me. But God, Jesus, turned back and cried out, it's not my will but thy will be done. So we see that. We understand that. So God, even though the pain was gruesome, Jesus took it all to Calvary. Hallelujah. We see it, God. But we also see in the future, Lord, that if we remain faithful and go through the trials and tests and become victorious in Christ, we shall be with you in paradise. Oh God, give us strength and the ability to hold on and to keep faithful for our reward is good in Christ Jesus. Bless us all this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Amen. God bless. God bless you. With rejoicing, let us All right, bless the Lord. So, sanctuary, indeed, it was a pleasure having you with us. We look forward to seeing you and continue coming into the sanctuary where we can lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The offering, please.